Okay, here we are, and we're going to get this valve lapping compound to work here. I just put a little bit on the valve seat itself, and then I'll probably put a little bit on the valve. Turning it around, and I put the drill on the end of the valve stem carefully, making sure I don't uh, booger up the case where the uh, valve cover goes on that surface that there was room to do it and I'll just be tapping on the uh, trigger going left and right and then you can feel that uh, when the gritty grittiness stops and the grinding kind of stops it'll smooth out I'll push the drill up right there like that turn it a little bit and then pull it back out and then you'll get the gritty grinding again. And that's when it's uh, lapping that valve seat. And after a few times it stops. And then you gotta like push it forward again a little bit. Turn the drill. And then pull it back. And do it over and over again. And you should get a good seal. And I'm just uh, taking, taking that lapping compound off. Kind of looking to see stays on there pretty good you gotta kind of wipe it off now what's interesting i think this is the yeah this is the intake valve the bigger one and it's got some pretty uh built up carbon deposits on there so i'm just doing a little close up here get down and show you how i just take a screwdriver and i'm staying off of the uh where the actual seal is the valve that i just uh you know, the part that just got kind of polished up and ground. I'll try to stay away from that. And I'm just taking a screwdriver and chipping this hard stuff off. I guess you could, like, soak this in something and soften it up. But I just figured I'd scrape it. Just getting it. Getting it off there. And, uh, anyway, I, I was going to talk about this, uh, this Great Dane company, actually, this Great Dane <clears throat> was founded by uh, Dane Skag, actually the founder of the Skag Company. And before he had the Skag Company back in the 70s, he uh, he created, uh, <clears throat> oh, what was the company? Oh, gosh, what is it? It's not coming to mind right now. Um, Bobcat. So he was the founder of Bobcat. And then he sold Bobcat to a, uh, a European uh, manufacturing company or John Deere. I forget which one. And then he went on to create the Skag Company, which he sold to then John Deere or that German company. And then I think it was in the early 90s he uh, he started the Great Dane Company. And he was an innovator uh, for the uh, stand-on, like the surfer. They called it the surfer mower. It was the first stand-on, and he won an OEM industry award for that design. And he was also the first one to put the uh, hydro motors on a uh, on a walk behind, I believe it was. So, uh, yeah, he's a he's an innovator, Dane Skag, and he passed away. I believe it was uh, 2013 or 2014. So that's a little history with uh, Great Dane. And now I'm doing the other valve. And just put your drill on there back and forth, left and right, and watch as I, every, every few turns, I will push it up off the seat. It's just a slight motion moving in toward the head with the drill to get it up off the seat, and then rotating it a little bit, and pulling it back against the seat 
and you'll get more uh, abrasive. There it is. Push it forward and then come back just so slightly. Just to get it off the seat a little bit, rotate it, and then pull it back onto the seat. And this works quite well. Yeah, this stuff's really abrasive and gritty, so you want to make sure to and uh, just uh, douche it down with that. Just get get that soap all over the valves and the head and just uh, get it covered with that. That's a pretty good shot. I might use that for a... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, and then back in the garage, making sure everything's nice and cleaned off and dry. And it's looking pretty good. And everything nice and wiped off. Don't want to have any of that grip laying around. So I'll be putting the valves back in here, show you how to do this without any special spring compression tools. Get some of this thick Lucas oil goo on the valve stems before I put them down in the guides. And there are the keepers. They're kind of tapered from bottom to top. They're skinnier on the bottom then on the top and you got those little grooves in there that hang on to the uh, top of the valve stem so make sure they go in correctly maybe even put them in to the valve stem before you uh, actually try to do this to see how they fit how they're supposed to fit on there together so the way I uh, Figured was the easiest way for me to do this without any special tools or to get, was to get one stuck in there and kind of start it, just kind of hanging on, and then grabbing the other one and shimmying it on down and on the other side. I think I dropped this a couple times trying to do it. I'm going to do a little close-up on this one. There we go. And... Yeah, I don't have the other one in there yet. Kind of get it started, kind of jammed in there, and then while you're keeping pressure, down pressure against it, compress that spring. There we go. It's really not that difficult. And then I kind of try to get it to where those gaps between the keepers are, are even. There it is. Yeah, it's not totally even, but that's pretty close. And I do the other side. There, I'm trying to make the gap a little more even. That's a little better. And I just put that rocker arm back on there. I try to keep the uh, rocker arm that uh, goes with the intake valve, with the intake valve parts, along with the spring and the keeper. So I just keep all the parts the same for the intake and the exhaust valve, respectively. Just keep them together. All right. And then it's time for, I forget which one this is, exhaust or intake, whatever. That would be the exhaust, the smaller one. Okay. Okay. It's kind of weird how the uh, the inside of the exhaust, uh, intake valve rather had all that carbon build up on it, but the exhaust did not. That one's going in pretty quick, so I got the first one jammed in there, and that's actually holding that spring down, but it's not going to do the job by itself. So we got to get the other one in there, and we should be good to go. Now it's time for a leak check.
So I take a little bit of water and put it on its side, put the head on its side and dump it on in. See if you get any leakage. That's out of, out of the exhaust valve, which is the one that was leaking. Okay, that one was not leaking, so it's it's good. Just a quick little test. Make sure that it's uh, uh looked like there was one drip coming out of there. Or not. And that's it. And hey, if you uh, enjoy this kind of stuff, I probably went back in and lapped it a little bit more. Just to make sure it was good. Because it did look like there's a little drop on there. So, anyway, yeah, if you like this stuff, like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.